The following programme is powered by Ride the Wave Media. Introducing the best podcast in Utah, Radio Daybreak. Here are your hosts, Just Plain and Bex. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Bex. We're here. And if, if, you, if you see... If you're watching, here is at Biscots. You know where you're at if you're a daybreaker. You got it? Right? Yes. It's right here at the hub at Biscots. Thanks to Prakash for having us out here. Now, we're doing things a little bit different this time, though. Yeah. Because our guest on today's show actually showed up. She's here. She showed up to the DBC today. <laughs> yes, she did. At Biscots, at Prakash's place. Yes. I want to make an announcement, though, because the DBC, the Daybreak Business Community, we're moving next week. That's yes. right. We're at Harmon's upstairs. Yes. So Daybreak come out Harmons, there. Harmon's, North Shore, oh. upstairs will be in the, uh, what did we decide? Southwest corner. That's it. So that's floor. 1 p.m. on Wednesday, April the, what is it? April the something. First know. Wednesday in April. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the date. First We're Wednesday, not first winter. <laughs> first Wednesday, first winter. But today's guest is Michelle Orton. Yes. R- related Welcome, to related to Randy Orton, we established yeah. that in the in the in the interview. Michelle, what's your website again? It's Michelle, M I C H E L L E Orton O R T O N slash realcoaching.com. There it is. Awesome. And we'll make sure that link is in there. Thank you. I we don't normally do this. We don't talk to our guest after we've already interviewed our guest. <laughs> I feel elevated, you know. But I love it because it's the throwdown is the Randy. This yeah. is the it's That's oh right. what would, what's your wrestling name? You got a wrestling name out there or Oh my, my gosh. gosh. What would it be? Thrasher. Ooh. Thrasher. I want to be a thrasher. Thrasher. Just, just destroy, eliminate, and you know, thrasher. I like I'm that. coming out of the ashes. Wreck everything Ooh, and leave. I love that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> what would yours yes. be, Bex? Oh my gosh, I don't even know. Oh come on, dig deep. Come on, get dig one. deep. She bone can't. crusher? The bone oh! crusher. <laughs> All right. We got the bone crusher and thrasher out here. Nice. All right. This has been oh great. Oh, my gosh. But Wait, now. You didn't give us your wrestling. Oh, yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah. but I was, I was actually a pro wrestler, so well, I don't I have, know. But what's your what, what I went it? by Blaze. I was Blaze. I was oh, the Hollywood right. Psycho. All right. The Hollywood Psycho Blaze. I came out in, in not your normal tights. I came out in prison garb, and I usually nice. had a policeman oh. escort me to the ring. <laughs> well, see, I'm a, little, I'm a smaller dude, so I was in there wrestling six foot five. These guys, these giants. So I had to come out there with a double different character. Blazing. Well, I, I wasn't blazing at the time. I came out in like prison what garb and I acted, I acted all crazy. It was wild. Not quite so 420. So yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Wasn't that kind of blaze? Not yet. That was later on in life. But that was my wrestling name. Let's get to this interview before we keep talking Let's about this. It. Goodness. Thank you. All right, Bex, we're here with our guest, Michelle Orton. She says that she's a, related to Randy Orton, a professional wrestler. You guys just had dinner the other night, you said, right? We did. It, it was a throwdown. So yes. It, it, was, it, 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 was, it was successful. It was, I love it. I love it. So, I got to know who won out of that match. Yeah, right? <laughs> Real crappy. So, so, Michelle, what I hear from Bex is that you're a trauma coach. Now, there's, I, is, that what, is that right? What is that? Correct. Well, I am a life coach, a trauma coach, a relationship coach, and a grief coach. Okay, so hold on. I got to stop you right there because there's. I thought that was all the same thing. You're telling. Is that different? Absolutely. Tell yeah. me the differences. I want to hear about that. Well, first of all, life is going to take in all of those elements, and to go to one coach that can handle everything that life is going to throw at you, I think, is a benefit. So, being a life coach. Maybe you're just having a little bit of bumps and bruises. You just need a little bit of improvement, some guidance, some accountability. You're just wanting to navigate a little bit. Then you come to me. If you want something a little bit more, then we go into trauma. Trauma is some of the heavier, deeper stuff, divorce, childhood trauma, you know, something that really rattled your cage and took you down to your ashes. And then we help you kind of rise from that and understanding what trauma does to your brain. And then grief is a sacred space that I love to walk with um, because I don't think it needs to be as heavy and as sad and as overwhelming as we make grief. Grief mm. is a, a beautiful transition and if we honor it the right way um it honors our loved one whoever passed on the right way and then 
I teach them what it does to their brain and how it rewires your brain. And then relationships, because relationships are hard as hell. Well, <laughs> all, all, but, but all kinds though, right? We're, we're not just talking about like an intimate relationship with your significant other. You're talking about business relationships, all types of relationships, right? They are. They're all hard. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you have to talk to a human, you're in a relationship. <laughs> yes. Hey, I, like I use a lot of I use a lot of AI, and I feel like I'm in a relationship with it sometimes. When you're <laughs> chatting back and forth, it's hey, uh, that's a whole other that's a whole other topic. Don't get me started on the AI stuff. So maybe AI uh, coaching's the next thing Michelle's going hey. to add to the list. <laughs> yeah, I I'll be a real life AI that has feelings, <laughs> emotion, compassion, and knowledge, and um, a little bit of um. So yes. But thanks for welcoming and letting me be a part of this, Blaine and Bex. I really appreciate this opportunity to shed some light on what it means to be a coach because it is totally separate than a therapist. And I think mm. there are so many layers to coaching and it gets kind of misunderstood. So, yeah. And I know. Um, yes. And exactly. With that being said, I know, you know, we were being lighthearted earlier, but what you do is actually life-changing for, yeah. for a lot of people. And I want you to dive in. I know that there's a story of a homeless man that you actually mm. coached. And I want you to just share that story briefly with us and the impact that you had in his life. Oh, it is such a great story. Thanks for letting me share it. Yeah. So I was had the opportunity. I lived in St. George at the time and I was volunteering at their their homeless shelter and every week I taught a life skills class just to help them get mm. back and basic information to when they're coming out of prison or out of a, a rehab and they just need a little bit more so this guy he comes to my class and he was very enthusiastic he's raising his hand asking a lot of questions he was participating he was phenomenal and he came up at the very end. He says, so you're a coach? And I said, yes. And he said, I'd like to hire you. And I said, I don't think you can afford me. <laughs> he said, well, I just got off the bus from purgatory. I have been. And that's all I have. And I he, said, you, no, he had, hold on. Uh, that cut out right there. I want to hear that. He had what? 52 cents. Oh. 52 cents. And um, I said, you can't afford me. I said, so you're going to have to earn it. And so I know what they had to do during the week to live at the shelters. There's certain chores and community service and helping stock the kitchen and cleaning. And you have to go out and do stuff in the community. And so I said, you have to do double what everyone else does and then come back and talk to me. Mm. And wow. So he came back in two weeks and he showed me his little card and he doubled it. And, oh. he, and I hire you now. And I says, well, do you have more money? And he says, no, I only have 52 cents. And I says, okay, well, this is going to be the most expensive coaching I've ever done. <laughs> wow. So I did the coaching. And during the process, what I think this really catapulted my career is because I figured out what people really need. Mm. He lost who he was because mm. when you the system and you become just a number. Mm -hmm throughout our society in throughout history where people become just a number or a mark and and that gets ripped away from him so I asked him who he was and he says well I was an inmate you know I, mm. I was a drug addict I committed this crime and I says no those are things you did who are you yeah want to know who you are and so really when we started to dig in and he understood that he has an identity yeah and he understood that he had worth and he understood that I saw him as a complete human with potential. And then finally, one day, we're probably about four sessions into it. And I said, who are you? And he said, you know what? I'm real. Yeah. Wow. Real everything. And he said, and I, and I want to start a company. And I said, awesome. What's the name of your company? And he said his company was called Wow world of wines and he wanted to own a wine tasting company and he wanted to travel to Italy and he wanted to get a degree and that's what his goal was and I said oh, okay my word this moment forward every time somebody says who are you or what do you do you own that title yeah that you are the owner of this company so how would you walk how would you speak what was 
what would be the words you use? How would you dress? What would you drive? And I said, I want you to put yourself into all of that right now. Get forward six years. He graduated with a master's degree. He owns a restaurant in the back of his restaurant. He has a room called Wow. And he did end up oh. getting a table. So it just reminded me at the beginning of my career, what people really want is to understand who they are. Mm -hmm. what that and as soon as he understood that he was real and he had power to change, then he can step into something that he could create, which was this business. And I'm super, super proud of him. That's awesome. So, so when you help redefine somebody's identity, because that's what you're doing, you're redefining their identity. True and identity. helping them see their true identity. When he said real, I get that. I understand that. You're not just approaching this like from a coaching perspective. It's more of a you're looking at it, each individual and you're tailoring something towards what they're looking for. And it's not you just going through a textbook, right? No, yeah. no. I, I love that you said that. Absolutely. They're individuals and and everyone is their own beautiful rare creation and that's what makes us unique you know we're all human but we're all individuals and so everyone who comes that's why i like to have diversity in my coaching because everyone's needs and what they're going to need help navigating or handling or you know debunking is completely tailored to them mm. yeah. and remind me michelle you've been doing this for how many years have you been coaching now 18, almost 19. It'll be 19 years this summer. A oh my word. So it's, it's a career that I've been very, very passionate about. And I have loved and sitting in this seat. And I feel very humbled and honored that I've got to help so many people, which more honestly, they help me. Every time yeah. I'm coaching, I'm like, oh, yeah, I needed that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad they were there to listen, but I really needed that. So apparently I'm in therapy or coaching for. <laughs> 18 and a half years. But yes, yeah, so when coaching started to become really popular a couple of years ago, I'm like, what? I worked so hard. I got my certification um, through a program at Stanford and, mm. and, and I've had learning ever since. I've never stopped taking classes. And so these little weekend coaching courses that they take and become a coach, it just drives me crazy. Mm. So, but I love that anyone is willing to sit in a position to help somebody else. So I love that that's available, but I do think that it's important that there is kind of some really solid anchoring to their education in order to help people the right way. Yeah. Now, when you and, go ahead, go Banks, ahead. go ahead. No, you got it. Oh, I was just going to say, and you've done a lot in those 18 years with your, with your coaching. I, um, wanted to touch on just a little thing about uh, TEDx. You had a TEDx talk. <laughs> oh, I did. I I didn't know you knew that, so I'm kind of. I surprised. did. <laughs> so yes, I was privileged enough to be able to stand on a TEDx stage in St. George. It was one for women and what women have overcome and trauma that women have gone through. And I was able to tell my story about overcoming um, childhood trauma. Mm. And it was an incredible experience to share the stage, stage with a whole bunch of powerful women. But that was, oh, probably eight, nine years ago. It was, the, <laughs> it, was, it was very intimidating, but very exciting. And it was an amazing opportunity to, to shed light on something that was a, a, a dark shadow in my past. Mm. And make it be something light and bright which you mm -hmm. can trauma um so when you own the story and share the story and you see how it changes somebody else's light that makes that dark theme a little bit less dark and it just gleams a little bit of hope for somebody else which makes trauma light mm. you know i really love that we as you know had the international women's day um Yes. Hot well, cats, which we you had the whole month. <laughs> yes, you did so great. Kudos to you. Um, but Blank and I have been continuing our shows, you know, with with females and kind of continuing that um through this month. And earlier this month, we talked to another guest who had had some very traumatic experiences as well and had to discuss that and even publicly, which was very challenging mm. with the situations that she went through. 
And really, kudos to you for doing that because so many more women need to hear those st- stories. And and I won't say just women, individuals. Oh, we lost her. Uh oh. Let's just we'll we'll just let her stop right there, and then I've been bringing her back in. I don't know what's happening with her connection, so hang tight. Okay. Sorry, guys, my internet today. I know. Just pick right back up right there, and we'll all so splice many it. Individuals really need to hear that, and the power that comes from those stories. That you know, they see somebody else who have gone through those moments, and it gives them hope. Yeah. I think that's a big part of that trauma and therapy and, you know, moving forward is they see that others can do it and it gives them, even if it's just a little bit of hope in those very dark times. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I got to ask you something though big because you said you've been doing this for 19 years. Is that what you said? 19, somewhere in almost two decades. Yes. You do a great job of balancing the differences in the types of coaching, but how do you listen to these stories for 20 years and, and, and keep yourself balanced and not fall into, oh, my God, that's the worst thing I've ever heard. You know what I mean? Like, it's got to be taxing at some point on you mentally to hear a lot of this stuff. How do you cope with that, you know? That is a question that I get quite often, and it's something that I actually teach my clients, and it's something I had to teach myself. So mm. when... I enter into a coaching, I have kind of like a routine or a ritual, just like if you were a pro athlete, you know, yeah. um, my, you know, my cousin Ray and I. So <laughs> the same, like if you go into the ring, the ring. And so when I go into my office, I have a spot and I tap it. And then actually it's right here. I hold this, this rock. And I put everything in here, all the energy, good, bad, positive, whatever it is, I hold it in there and I sit in that space with them and whatever mm-hmm. that space is. And when I'm done, I tap the wall and I give it all to the rock and I literally walk out and I'll see somebody on the street and they're like, oh, do you remember when we talked about that? And I'm like, nope, um, my rock will. <laughs> <laughs> But I have learned just to separate and use certain tools. So I use the rock. I use the tapping. Sometimes I use music. I do need to decompress after some of the heavier ones and to honor what emotions that are coming to my body. So myself, this is the sensation my body's feeling. This is the emotion I'm feeling. And then I tell myself, well, what do I want? I, I want to hold it for them or I want to release it or I need to journal it, or I need to do something. But I use a tool, and it takes me three to five minutes, depending on what the situation is. But I've just become accustomed to it, and it's a privilege. It's really a privilege to hear people's stories, yeah. because like you, what you talked about, stories is what connects. And since the beginning of time, they would sit around a campfire, and then they would write the stories on cave walls, and then there yeah. was sonnets and songs and plays and music it's it's connection so i just feel honored that someone wants to connect and they trust me and they feel safe so mm-hmm. I, I just have a little system and it works and it's beautiful and I, did, did you come up with that or or did that get passed down to you like how did you come up with with that for you you know tell you the truth i i read a story about this guy he had a very stressful job and when he came home his wife was complaining about how negative he was and how hard he was to have dinner with and he was just grumpy and ornery she says can't you just leave the stuff at the front door and he's like you know what you're right so every day when he came home from work he'd say i'm just leaving the stuff at the front door and he tapped the front door and i'm like and he said it worked it was just an article i read and i said does that really work and it does and so i decided to follow suit and i just have this certain spot that I tap and I just leave it there and it holds it. And when I tap it, I can feel it come back into me. So something I learned probably 15 years ago, I I didn't know how to hold all this energy emotions from people. So I was really grateful that I read this story and, and adapted this one simple tool. That's incredible. So if you pan the camera over right now to that spot, 15 years of tapping. I bet there's like a giant <laughs> hole in the wall, right? Like just. <laughs> well, and all the emotion there, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. If, yeah, it's got to be just a giant, just a 
or or it's been patched a, mo- a bunch or she's got like <laughs> yeah, a exactly. just pure concrete over there <laughs> oh my gosh my ipad to move every two years i just knocked down the walls i knocked the whole i've moved 32 times and and that the true reason because <laughs> I, I just shattered walls she's she, she's moved 32 times back she just missed that because oh, your internet God. dropped out again but it's okay 32 times because she keps knocking the walls down that's oh, what she my said gosh. i bet michelle oh, that's the not a problem it's hey just, michelle it's the, I, I'll just keep knocking walls down with people. <laughs> this this has been incredible. Um, I I where can, first of all, where, where can we find you yeah. before we let you go? Because yeah. So my website or my yeah, Michelle Orton dash real coaching dot com, and you can find me there. And uh, my phone number is. You can give that out also. It's four three five. Two one five three zero one three. All righty, we appreciate this. Bex, you got anything else for her? I don't. Do you have anything else that you would like our listeners to hear, Michelle? Anything upcoming or exciting or yes, any announcement you'd like to share? Yeah, absolutely. So I am excited. This summer, I am hosting what's called Warrior Weekends, and they are going to be um, retreats, but they're different than normal retreats. Retreats, I love. It's usually where you go and you get pampered and you get to be cocooned and you get your little blanket and do your yoga and do your breathing. And it's really important to have that sacred space, but this is not. If you mm. want to come to mine, mine is a warrior weekend. It's like survivor weekend. You're going to learn to have full real life. Here's a bug out bag. We're going to test your skills. We're going to face all of your fears and We're going to level you up. I want you to rise. I want you to walk through fear and come out the other side. So when we go through something hard like the pandemic or something in your life hits you, you're like, hey, I I know how to rise up. I know how to handle this because I just went done hard. 72 hours where I chose to sit in the hard and I chose to go through it the best of my ability. And so- Mm. We're going to have these going to be June, July, and August. In part of September, I have this beautiful property that is up near Lava Hot Springs. Mm. So we'll learn survival skills, but there's also going to be interesting things like the plants, the municipal, you know, what you can do with plants, how to eat them, body paint, tie dye. But you're also going to learn how to throw axe and tie knots. And then there's going to be amazing coaching individual group. Um, but if you've seen the movie Survivor, that's what my camps are. So it's wow. going to be absolutely a phenomenal summer. We're going to have relationship ones, trauma ones, grief ones, uh, and just regular life to help you handle life. So that's my exciting summer. I'm super, super excited about it. I love that. Now, Survivor, that's not the one where the last person... Live living gets all the money, is it? That's not a one of those battle royale type movies. Yeah, we're in a battle, but I want everyone <laughs> to not survive because I don't like the word survive because survive means you're just like crawling across the line and you're still breathing. I want you to be victorious. I want you to know that you've won and you and you become a warrior and you are living in this different state of being victorious. So that's what our survivor camp's going to be is to get you out of survivor mode and get you into warrior mode. And information on that can be found at michelleorton-realcoaching.com. That is coming. Um, We're still building the website and the landing page, but it will be announced on my website when I complete it, hopefully in about two weeks. Awesome. So excited. We'll be watching for that. Yeah. Thanks so much, Michelle. Michelle. Yeah. So great to have you on the show. Thank you so very much for sharing and and diving into those, you know, sometimes tough topics for people to talk about and do what you do. It's fantastic. Blaine, what did you have to add? That's it. We're good. Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me.